Hello everyone, so today we'll be using the new skills module and we'll be combining this with the melee module in order to create an execution after the enemy only has a certain amount of health left. But before we start, I'd like to thank all of my Patreons for the amazing support. This scene will be made available on Patreon. So I've got a really simple scene here, uh, nothing special. So we have a player, uh, nothing on him. We have a character, nothing on him either. Uh, just a red color for him to stand out. I'll be using um, Frank Slash Pack, which basically is like six different packs of uh, Frank Climax into uh, one. It's on sale as well at the moment with Black Friday, etc. So I'll add the link in the description, but basically you'll have a, a bunch of animation packs um, for a pretty low price. So what I'll be using is the Assassin animation and I'll be using the in place ones. So not the root motion because we need to be able to uh, modify the offset, etc. I'll use um, hit knockdown uh, this one. And here just make sure that uh, these two are turned on and loop time is turned off. So this is the animation, you know, he'll fall. Beautiful. Um, I'll also be using um, the first skill animation and same here so make sure these are turned on um, it's this skill basically so simple I know there's more advanced ones but you know this one's fine and yeah that's uh, that's it when it comes to the animations and these will be the two we'll be using obviously you can you know if you have these packs you can change all of the the default animations as well but that's not really the goal here so we'll start off with the player here um, let's add character melee let's add the skills component um, in the skills component I'll turn off use skill bar I'm not going to use it and this is all fine I'll add an empty here and we'll call this draw this is going to be a trigger uh, key down and I'll use the E button uh, simply because well it's often used for equipping stuff I'll add some conditions here so the condition is going to be really simple um, melee is character uh, unarmed uh, then he's going to draw a weapon sword weapon so I'll just be using the default one here and if not he's going to sheath the weapon there we go and that's it so same button will either draw or sheath um, we'll be adding something else to this as well uh, so it will be uh, will be a bit more so I'm going to add uh, a weight 0 0.5 and we'll uh, we'll set the target what is it focus melee yeah there we go and I'll just drag any character. Now I know this is not the conventional way of doing it, but I just want to make sure I'm, uh, you know, I'm targeting this enemy and not just, you know, flying around. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, I'll copy this one, paste it over, and I'll do a release as well um, when we sheath the weapon. Now you can do a lot more with this, um, you know, with variables, and we can actually do that um, with what we're setting up as well. So speaking of variables, let's actually go to preferences and add one. Um, I'm just going to call this finisher and it needs to be a game object I'm not sure tags actually matters in this case but I just set it to everything I always do that um, so yeah there we have it um, really simple then what we're going to add as well here um, so let's add another trigger so I don't know, let's call this combat instead of draw. Um, mouse down. Um, this is going to be really simple. So melee, input, melee attack, um, just A, and that's it. And going to add another trigger here. And this will be um, mouse down as well. And this will be the middle mouse. And that will be um, execute skill. And um, we don't have that yet, so let's actually start by uh, start by adding one. Uh, we don't even have to do much yet. 
So add skill, and we'll name this finisher. There we go. And now we can uh, select it here. And we'll set that up later. So really basic, really simple. Um, but yeah, these are the things we uh, we need to have. So let's actually call them melee finisher and draw. There we go. So really simple sets, um, nothing all that special. Now, no, you can't, won't be able to just execute this finisher all the time. There will be conditions. Uh, will be conditions based on it. Um, but yeah, that's that's it really for the player. Um, that's all we're going to do. Now let's head over to the character, and the character is going to be a tiny bit more, a uh, bit more interesting, um, simply because the character will have a, a couple of things. So for one, we'll start with a trigger on start. And I just want him to draw his weapon, basically. So draw weapon. It's going to be the same sword. So invoker uh, sword weapon. And there we go. Um, let's add some stats to him. Um, we need to have health here. That's important. Um, we'll add character melee as well. There we go. He needs to have that as well. And we're going to add a, another trigger. And this will be uh, receive, uh, on receive attack. And yeah, should I be doing more here? Um, I don't think so, no. Let's just keep it simple. So on receive attack, uh, attribute value of needs to be the game object, and vocal won't work in this case. A subtract, if you don't have subtract for some weird reason, I know some people don't, uh, just do add and use a minus value. Um, I'll just use subtract, and there we go. And then uh, next up, what we're going to add is another trigger, and this will be uh, on attribute change. Uh, of the invoker, his health, and we'll do a uh, on decrease and we'll set up some conditions. Now what we're going to do here is um, at the mark of, I'm going to do 30 health, you can do 10, you can do 20, you can do whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's low enough um, you know, to perform an execution. So this is where I'm going to decide at what value we can actually execute or finish, if you want to call it a finisher, um, the enemy. So, invoker in this case is fine. So if his health is less or equal to, and you think 30, but <laughs> in this case we actually need to do zero. So what happens when he actually has no health left, um, which I'll explain in a bit. And here we're going to do a, a call actions, call conditions, sorry about that. And we'll just duplicate this one, drag it in. Oh, that's the wrong one. None, there we go. So in these conditions, we'll call these ones. So once it's less than uh, 30 or less, um, we're going to basically activate a canvas. So let's create that. So game creator, uh, now just UI, uh, canvas, um, world space. There we go. Um, zero 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 so it needs to be on top of the uh, the actual enemy um, 0 0.1 or 0 0.1 oh there we go um, and yeah this is going to be my campus uh, <laughs> nothing pretty um, Let's rename this to, um, uh, I don't know, execute, no, finish canvas, finisher canvas, something like that, it's fine. So the goal here is basically to um, show the player, now you can, you know, perform your finisher. Um, so let's add some text. Um, and the text will be really plain and simple text, it will just tell the, the player what to do. Um, so I'm not going to make it pretty. You know, 
you can make it pretty. Um, I'll just uh, press middle mouse to finish perform finisher. How about for finisher? There we go. Uh, let's make this, I don't know, 13. There we go. That looks better. Uh, still doesn't look great, but that's okay. Can I actually duplicate this? I'm not. I'm not really sure what I'm doing yet. Um, let's do red-ish. There we go. So I'm not sure why I'm complicating uh, complicating things so much, but I think it's looks better if it's oh, if it's in red. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. Looks cool. So that's it, really simple canvas. We're going to turn that off and this is what we'll be using in these conditions on attribute value change. Um, so if uh, health is zero or less, um, we'll go turn this off. Let's copy that action. If it's uh, 30 or less, we'll turn it on. Now, the reason this needs to be the first condition is because um, if we put the 30 or less first, um, it would always meet that requirement and basically never trigger this one even if the value low is even more. And it will if this is the first requirement that is being checked. So is it already zero and if it's at 30 or 20 or 10? No, it will call these. And then if the value changes again of health, he'll check this first. So that's why this needs to be the first one. So pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. Uh, not much to it really. So now that we've, uh, we've done that, let's get started with the actual skill. So we have our finisher. Um, I'm not going to set up any new types. Um, you know, self is body, it's all fine. You can change that to something else. Um, we'll be using instant execute. Um, execution time, I'm going to set five seconds. Uh, it's okay if it's, uh, you know, lost a bit shorter, it won't have any impact here. Um, by default, it's going to be unlocked, no skill points used or anything like that. And um, basically, it will need a, uh, uh, a condition. And this condition is going to be based on attribute value. And it's going to be based on the finisher. And I'll, uh, I'll show you in a bit where we're actually going to store this. So finisher health and um, less or equal the same 30 then we can actually perform the finisher now we need to set up where we get this value from so let's close this for a minute and i'll do it while um, in combat um, you don't have to uh, there we go nearest with tag um, we're going to store that in finisher origin is the player and I'm going to do one so yes you have to be really close I mean that's kind of the goal here and the tag is going to be enemy so that means that this character needs to have that tag if you don't have that tag just add it or use a different name honestly it really doesn't matter so that's it um, so basically what will happen whenever we perform a melee attack um, let's do that first actually um, he'll first gather the closest uh, person with the tag of enemy and stores that in the variable. And yeah, I mean, that's it. So then in preferences, we're going back to our skill here. Um, so this value needs to be um, less than 30 or less before we can actually perform it. 
and you know that's that's basically it there's not much um, else we have to set up which is a good thing um, it's all supposed to be rather easy that's the whole point so I'm going to do a couple of things here um, you don't have to do everything I'm doing obviously um, so I'm going to start by uh, changing the field of view simply because it's you know a quick easy trick to change the camera um, yes it would be better to use different camera motors uh, well it doesn't have to be better you know if you want to have a different look I'd advise setting up different camera motors for example I'm also going to change the time scale to 0 0.1 I think so yeah real slow motion um, it adds some dramatic impact it literally doesn't add any other value than dramatic impact uh, if you have some post-processing definitely you know use it um, we're also going to do a property so the player won't be controllable that's the whole point um, you know you don't want the player to be able to move while he's performing this execution or finisher whatever you want to call it it will just look weird um, then wait 0. Point, uh, I'm going to do 0 0.01 which basically is close to nothing but I want these to perform first before the next steps happen that's kind of the idea I'm going to use gesture here um, which is something I don't often use um, but in this case for the player is actually really useful and we'll be using the uh, skill what is it uh, skill one here we'll drag that in and that's what the player will be using so no I'm not going to change anything else here then I'm going to add a weight and I want to explain why I'm adding this weight as well and I'm going to copy this one over and copy this one over so yeah let me explain why we have these weights so what we're going to do next is we're going to um, you know create a new state basically for the enemy which is the um, you know the animation you saw in the beginning of the video where he um, you know has a more dramatic uh, being hit effect where he falls to the ground and the reason I'm adding these weights is in order for the timing to be better um, if you don't have a weight then the timing will be off from the moment when he actually strikes so I mean that's it really that's the reason why we're doing this um, next up we're going to do a state and the reason we're not doing a gesture here is because for the enemy this is it you know he's going to be gone um, you know he's going to be uh, dead pretty much so he won't be um, you know a gesture only plays once and then just returns to um, you know his original uh, animations uh, state change uh, that won't be the case so it will just stop unless you reset the change which we won't be doing so I'll just do an animation clip uh, there's no need to have an actual state and we'll do the uh, the knockdown in here so I'm going to set this to layer 2 I want this to take priority over all of his other animations um, so that's going to be quite important and yeah I mean that's it then I'm going to add a weight of 1.2 and that weight is related to the rest of the animation time so you know for in order for everything to finish then we're going to copy this one over again um, we want our player to be controllable again so that's going to be quite important you know he needs to be able to move another small detail is that we also need to um, release the target here so release target and the reason for that is that, you know we killed this guy so we shouldn't be focusing on him anymore and we're going to remove the last bit of health and again we're referring to this global variable of um, of finisher because that's where the enemy is stored and we're just going to do use a set here so set value zero and then we're changing our field of view back as well and that the original value is 60 of field of view so if you change this already make sure you set it back to its original value
whatever you you know you set up um, but by default it's uh, it's 60 and literally that's it so let's actually give this a try so I'm going to save this oh one thing though before we actually start doing this so I made a change to the sword weapon um, to the clips so we have uh, my attack um, ignore this one actually let me remove this in order to avoid confusion um, so we have uh, my attack one two three so let me click on all of those and what I did is I turned off defense and poise because um, I don't want him to be knocked back you know basically uh, simply because the default knockback animation is actually pretty extreme <laughs> uh, you know he goes back a lot and it triggers really fast uh, I'm not really even you know I'm I personally don't even use that um, don't find it important I find it important for the player not so much for an enemy so um, so yeah there we go so let's try this out so right now so I'm going to stand close to him and I'm going to show you um, the variable so finisher uh, variable uh, right now it's nothing and as you can and you know if you stand close enough basically it enters the value of the uh, the character uh, maybe one is a bit a uh, bit too low you have to be really close so I change it to two actually for the gather tag here uh, so I yeah, recommend actually changing that to uh, to two and now you will see this so press middle mouse for the finisher and we have this little dramatic effect and we'll, uh, we'll finish him and that's it you know enemy dead now if you want to make sure um, you know this works a tiny bit better so imagine your distance being bigger uh, you can add a couple of things so if we go to uh, preferences for example and we go to skills on execute we can actually add something else so move character uh, so player move to variable uh, global variable and uh, finisher I'm going to set uh, threshold to 1 there we go yeah, that's good. Um, so yeah, we're going to set it to one. So basically, we don't want to. You know, you can't literally go to the ver global variable. The enemy will be in the, standing in the way. So we need to have a tiny bit of distance. So that's why we have the one. Wait till arrive, and this is why you can make this. You know, a bit longer than it uh, maybe should be. Um, oh, even six would will be fine. Um, simply because everything is already finished in this set so we're not using on finish uh, I wanted to have everything in here so we have a bit of liberty with uh, the execution time so yeah um, you know it can take six seconds and if the walking takes a bit longer it takes a bit longer that's completely fine cool let me save this and let's play again So one thing I do want to highlight, we should actually have done that before hitting play mode. Um, you need to make sure that um, this is actually the radius is at least 2 or 1.5. 1 really is too low. So there we go. I'm going to hit him a couple of times. Perfect. Now I'm going to stand a bit further and then I'm going to hit middle mouse and we perform our... Uh, finisher and yeah there you go perfect so yeah that's it really that's really all we have to do and yes you could make this a lot more complex um, you know by having um, you know camera shake in there and if you look at the latest Assassin's Creed for example there's a lot of camera action going on um, but in the end it's just you know two, uh, two animations playing and that's pretty much it as well Yes, um, I would definitely advise, um, you know, trying to find uh, animations that really match each other well. 
um, or you could have um, you know for example when I look at this um, this melee pack where is it um, Frank Frank slash pack so if we check um, the assassin for example and you check um, yeah 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 um, skill 4 so let's say skill 4 this is a really long animation with a lot of hits and the only way something like this is going to look good <coughs> and the only way something like this is going to look good is if you have um, an animation for the enemy matching those amount of hits if you don't have that it's just going to look horrible and awful yes you could easily do that if, with, if you have for example Umotion Pro um, you can just um, grab those hit animations from you know hit reactions and combine them into one long animation that matches this but yeah you know you'll have to do a, a bit of a copy pasting pretty much so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed this if you did please hit like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one